Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. An arrest made in a murder that happened just last month after someone was stabbed 13 times. What we're now learning about the case and learning about the individual now behind bars. Plus new information in that fiery plane crash that happened in Houston this past week. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 72 degrees to start your Sunday morning. We are a week away from Halloween. Is it going to finally feel like it? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning, 8 o'clock this Sunday, October 24th. Like we said, a week from Halloween. Very excited for Halloween. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You know, I, I haven't gotten to the store to get the candy yet. Mm -hmm. I probably should go because the worst is when you go mm -hmm. like, so Halloween's on Sunday. Yeah. So if you go on Saturday or on Sunday, oh. oh, forget about it. You got the crowds. You got the supply chain issues. I know. Big question is the weather, Sarah Spivey. What are we looking like today? Is it going to play nice? Well, it'll feel a lot more like Halloween during Halloween, but today and today, tomorrow it's going to be hot. It's going to feel a lot like a summer day out there. And in fact, not only can you feel the humidity, but you can also see it outside. Visibility is down to less than two miles in New Braunfels, down to less than a quarter of a mile in Beeville. And we do have some areas of light mist out there around San Antonio this morning. But a look at the airport shows that it's cloudy, 73 degrees. Winds are from the south at about 10 miles per hour. Humidity very high. Dew points near 70. 70 degrees. So today we're going to be looking at clearing skies. It'll be warm and humid this afternoon. 88 degrees for the high temperature, but that 88 is going to feel more like in the low 90s because of that high humidity. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. But as we were talking about a little bit earlier, by Halloween, it's going to feel more like fall. A noticeable cold front will be moving through Wednesday morning. That'll drop our highs from the 90s, our lows from the 70s. Highs will be down to the 70s, close to 80 degrees, and morning lows will be back into the 40s. It'll also be very dry outside. So goodbye to that humidity. That cold front can't come any sooner, but with that front comes the opportunity for some rain as well. So we'll have a look ahead coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, an arrest and a murder that happened last month on the city's west side. The arrest affidavit reads that the suspect turned himself into police. Jonathan Cotto is at police headquarters with the latest. Jonathan, how did this all unfold? Well, right now, 64-year-old Juan Becerra Jr. is behind bars and facing a murder charge. This after this in connection with the death of 50-year-old Roy Salinas Jr., who was found stabbed to death on the corner at a gas station on the corner of Enrique Barrera Parkway and Commerce Street. Let's take a look at Becerra's mugshot on your screen right there. After looking at surveillance cameras in the area, police believe Becerra is the man seen walking up to Salinas, stabbing him several times before running away. Salinas died at the scene. Now, this all happened about a month ago, and on Friday, a witness to the crime spoke to detectives about what he saw, but he claimed he had no idea what Becerra was going to do. Now, Mark, uh, Max and Sarah, yesterday Becerra turned himself into police. It's still unclear why the stabbing took, uh, took place, but of course, all this is under investigation. Reporting from Public Safety Headquarters, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, grabbing a late night bite to eat ends with a man being shot on the city's west side. But right now, here's what we know. A man telling police he was driving the area of Castroville Road and West 34th Street around 2 a.m. That's when another vehicle pulled up alongside him, fired multiple shots. That vehicle with the suspect inside then sped off. Now, the man who was shot, he was shot several times. He was able to drive himself home. It was nearby. That's where he called 911, taken to University Hospital to be treated. So far, police still investigating, but at last check, no arrests have been made. A possible case of retaliation. That's what police are thinking led to a man being stabbed on the far west side overnight. Neighbors called police after midnight reporting the man laying in the street injured. This was on Broad Acres near Dugas Drive, west of South Ellison. Officers say the man had reported his car stolen earlier that day and believe the two incidents may be related. So far, there is no description of that suspect. Now the latest on that fiery plane crash in Houston that happened this past week. Investigators are looking into the maintenance work done on the plane and say it had not been flown since December. The private jet crashed through an airport fence and burst into flames on Tuesday. Fortunately, all 21 people on board were able to escape. The National Transportation Safety Board also says that tire marks on the runway show that the pilots were braking hard and tried to stop takeoff when the accident happened. 
With the technology industry in and around San Antonio growing so fast, one of the big catalysts for that growth is Geekdom. It is a co-working space downtown San Antonio. It provides a collaborative community with resources and opportunities to help local businesses develop. So joining us in today's Leading SA segment is the CEO of Geekdom, Charles Wooden. Good morning, Charles. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. So, Charles, I tried to explain geekdom, but it's so much more than how I tried to articulate it. For those who maybe don't understand what it is, can you describe it? Uh, yeah, so Geekdom is a place where we assist individuals who have ideas to help build those into viable businesses, whether that be a startup, small business, something along those lines. We have resources and programs to assist individuals to be able to build it into something uh, spectacular. You guys have a really cool office and workspace in downtown. So how have you seen San Antonio grow over the last 10 years? I mean, it's been exceptional growth. Uh, you know, you think back to 2011 when Geekdom was founded and there were really no startups that you could really speak of in and around uh, San Antonio. And now when you go downtown, when you go across the city, you see all sorts of, you know, new and exciting startups, uh, big sales happening. Um, and, and, and it's just really changed. And so that ecosystem that's grown up in the last 10 years uh, is kind of what we were trying to celebrate uh, on Friday this last week. And just seeing all the partners, Port San Antonio, Launch SA, uh, Velocity Texas, all there. Uh, it was a really fun time. And so you guys just celebrated 10 years this past week. What does the next decade look like for downtown and look like for the tech community? You know, I mean, uh, I, I had read this book once uh, about how, how it takes or what it takes to build a startup ecosystem. And one of the key pieces to that was it's a 20 year journey. Uh, so here we stand uh, halfway through that journey. And the next 10 years, I think you're gonna see a lot of exponential growth. You're gonna see a lot more startups. You're gonna hear a lot more amazing stories like Pathwire that sold recently for $1.9 billion. You're gonna see a lot more of those things happening over this next 10 years. And I think you're gonna see the pockets of San Antonio where these startups call home, Port San Antonio, uh, the East side over where Velocity Texas is and in downtown are going to continue to grow and a lot of density is going to build up in those areas. You know, when it comes to the tech industry, a lot of people think Austin. So what is your pitch to people to come to San Antonio if they are starting a business and why the Alamo City? I mean, I, I think that there's a couple points there. I think the first point is, is that here in San Antonio, the culture of collaboration is so much stronger than any other place that I've been. Uh, you know, here you'll find somebody who you typically think would be a uh, competitor working together with you to help build your business a little bit better and to help find that next client for you. I think that that's one thing that San Antonio is very unique uh, for. And I think it's one of those things that we continue to embrace. I also think that, you know, here in San Antonio, there's a lot bigger opportunity for companies to, you know, you know, be the big, big dog in the neighborhood. So, you know, as you think these big companies grow uh, here in San Antonio, it's you know, they have a bigger opportunity to build uh, what the city is going to look like in the future. Uh, and of course, affordable uh, housing, affordable rent for, um, you know, uh, their business, all sorts of things. The money just goes a lot farther here. Now, if anyone is watching, if they're looking to start a business, looking to start a startup, what is your advice to them? I mean, I would say take the take the leap, uh, come down to Geekdom, check out uh, our website, geekdom.com, or come to one of our startup weekends, which we look at as kind of the the top of the journey when you're when you're walking in. It's a 54 hour event. We have one coming up here in early December. So uh, check out our website. You can you know, you can register there. Uh, but that's kind of where it all begins and just not being afraid of, of making that leap. We've got the resources. We've got the community to support you. Well, Charles, the CEO of Geekdom, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And for our viewers watching, if you want to see this full conversation, you can watch it later this morning on KSAT.com. Thank you, Charles. Thank you. Time now is just about 8.09, 72 degrees out. Well, you might have heard some people talking about it. The Broadway performance of The Lion King is in town. Later in the show, we'll get a behind-the-scenes look. And how about the Roadrunners? Birds up, 8-0. and oh, It was you know, since here McCormick had three touchdowns, the defense looked phenomenal. We're going to have a look at yesterday's game and really, I'll say it, dismantling of Louisiana Tech. And the news that might reignite panic buying. Oh. The supply chain issues now impacting the supply of alcohol. That story after the break. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. It's an issue we talk about a lot, the supply chain, and the issues are now impacting the supply of alcohol across the country. Experts say there's also a shortage of glass, clearly making it difficult for local manufacturers and brewers to make their own brand. So some stories here in Texas are limiting how many products you can buy. The regional manager of Spec says the amount of alcohol available for sale is down about 25% since before COVID. 
This morning when I got here, we had 50 people waiting in line just to see what we had coming in this morning because it's a, it's a guessing game for us just as the guest. They don't know what's coming, we don't know what's coming. We see the orders the day before, we, we get them to, in the morning, we put it out for sale and they're gone by the end of the day. But even with those issues, alcohol sales are up about 15%. Yeah, I mean, this supply chain situation is no joke. We, uh, we're yeah. working on a story, uh, meat prices increasing, brisket prices up more than 20%. Pretty much gonna feel it in all aspects it's, of life. Yeah, especially with holiday shopping. It, Speaking of is, holiday Is shopping. that fog we're seeing or just clouds, Sarah? It's the haziness yeah. on the horizon there. You know, the, the humidity is so thick that you can see it on the horizon. And in some places we're seeing some mist. Uh, I went up and turned the intensity up on our radar here. And although some of this is ground clutter, you can make out that along 281 there near Bolverde, there's some light mist working its way from south to north. Mist and uh, light rain, very difficult to detect on the radar, but you can see it there a little bit in the higher elevations. Uh, so don't be surprised if you have somewhere to go early this morning. If you have to turn on those windshield wipers, maybe once or twice, it, this is not gonna amount to anything that's measurable anywhere across the Alamo City and we'll actually see clearing skies by 10 o'clock and into the afternoon. It's going to be a warm one with mostly sunny skies, 88 for the high temperature, although because it's going to be humid, that 88 is going to feel probably more like 92, 93 degrees outside. Uh, yeah, I went for a longer walk yesterday and it was definitely not feeling like fall, definitely hot outside. Winds not as breezy as yesterday from the south at five to 10 miles per hour and we'll see the sunset at 650 tonight. We're still going to be close to 80 degrees by 10, so it is going to be a very mild evening. We need a cold front to help boot out this humid weather, and we're going to get that a little bit later on this week, especially by Wednesday morning. Outside right now, you can see that visibility is down to about two miles out in New Braunfels, outside of the city center. The visibility a little bit less in areas, again, because of the high humidity close to the temperatures, dew points close to the temperatures this morning. 72 in New Braunfels, 73 Port SA, 76 at Stenson, 70 in Bandera, and it's still in the 60s in Kerrville, but close to 70 degrees. What's really impressive is when you consider the fact that our average low this time of year is 58. So we are 15 degrees warmer than that already to start the day here in San Antonio. 76 in Del Rio, 74 in Catula. There's a cold front. Uh, that is going to be moving our way slowly but surely. This particular front is going to get hung up in North Texas, though, tomorrow, not moving through San Antonio. In fact, tomorrow going to be a record challenging day when it comes to the heat. The forecast high tomorrow, 91 degrees. The record high tomorrow, 91 degrees. So we'll be awfully close to those records. And by the way, that 91 feeling closer to the upper 90s because of the high humidity. But then there will be a real deal cold front that'll move through along with some moisture from Tropical Depression Rick. That's going to be moving through Tuesday night into Wednesday, bringing us about a 30 to 40 percent chance for scattered showers and storms. We are going to be on the tail end of that system, but with that system does come a risk for severe weather, especially north of San Antonio from San Angelo all the way up to Kansas. But again, we're going to be on the tail end of that, so I can't rule out a few strong storms when that front moves through Tuesday night into Wednesday. The benefit, though, is not necessarily going to be the rain. It's going to be the cooler mornings for us. So humidity will be around through uh, about early Wednesday morning, and then that humidity will be sapped out of the air. And we're going to be looking at morning lows back into the 40s by the start of Halloween weekend. So it will feel more like Halloween by the time Halloween rolls around. Our high temperatures, too, will be right near 80 degrees. So a lot more pleasant outside after today's heat and humidity tomorrow's near record heat and then a chance for those storms Tuesday night into Wednesday. It'll get windy behind that front as skies clear and we usher in that fall feeling once again. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, we're getting closer to Halloween and there are several family fun events going on around the city this week leading up to next Sunday. If you just head to ksat.com, you can find a list of activities as well as maps showing you some nearby pumpkin patches and corn mazes to check out. Just click on the things to do section under the entertainment tab and check out our Halloween section too. So a couple weeks back, Jonathan Coates did a live shot. I think it was Trader's Village. Yes, at the corn maze. Yes, they had the apple gun. That was actually pretty good. Time now, 818, 72 degrees out.
a dino fossil selling for major bucks where this triceratops fossil was found and how much it was sold for after the break. Also, his name. Mm, the names are the best part. Yes. All right, let's take a look at those louder numbers. Pick three, four, zero, zero, fireball five, daily four, zero, three, three, six, fireball four. Cash five, one, 11, 22, 24, 34. Texas Lotto, four, eight, 31, 42, 51, 53. Powerball, 10, 30, 51, 57, 63. Powerball 20, power play two. ASAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Building an Ofrenda is an important Day of the Dead tradition. These altars have many pieces and parts and they each have a specific purpose. The colorful skulls found on many Ofrendas are called sugar skulls. These days they may not be made out of sugar, but in the beginning they were. The art of molding granulated sugar and meringue was brought to Mexico by the missionaries. With sugar in abundance, it became a popular art supply in colonial times. So the first sugar skulls were not candy, they were decorative. So why a sugar skull? They symbolize many things, one being the sweetness of life. Originally placed on graves, the rain and wind would eventually wash them away. So they're also used to remind us of our mortality. To honor their loved one, people usually write the name of the departed on the Sugar Skull's forehead. It's a sweet thing to do. My favorite dinosaur, Triceratops. Mm. Why? Because it has my name in it. And this is oh. the world's largest Triceratops fossil, sold for over $7 million at an auction house in Paris. The skeleton is 66 million years old, and here it is. The name it was given, Big John. The remains are largely intact. They were found in South Dakota in 2014 and was expected to sell for just under $2 million. But hey, Big John was like, I've waited 66 million years for this. So we talked about it earlier. Uh, there's a T-Rex named Stan. Stan, he is, he's got the record for he most does. expensive right. sale. I like that though, the Triceratops, because it has my name in it. Yeah. That was good, I didn't even think about that. Only thing that. I could ever remember when I was little. Okay. Yeah. Time now, 824, 72 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMS 8, 830, the latest involving the film set shooting that killed a cinematographer, how the gun ended up in Alec Baldwin's hands. Well, let's look at some of the biggest stories you may have missed this weekend. Our Jonathan Cotto joining us live with all the details. Good morning, happy Sunday, I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa, it's Sunday, October 24th. Thank you so much for waking up with us on this somewhat beautiful Sunday. You know, I, it's a win if it's not like, it, it's super humid outside. We're just yeah. gonna say beauty in the eye of the beholder. It, exactly. Like, we can make it a beautiful day if you want to, Sarah, but <laughs> according to- it's, it's what you make out of it, yeah. Sarah. According to many people's standards though, this is not gonna be a beautiful fall day. It's gonna feel a lot more like uh, late spring or early summer outside. Right now, you can look out there and you can see the clouds, you can see the haze on the horizon. There is humidity out there. Dew points are in the 70s. That is a summertime dew point. It feels very muggy outside. And in some places, there's actually a little bit of mist out there right now this morning. It's 72 in New Braunfels, 72 at JBSA Randall, 68 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 70 in Comfort, 70 in Bandera, 71 in Divine. And today, we're looking at a high temperature, 88 degrees with clearing skies. You know, it's hard to believe that we're in the low 70s now and and this time last week, Sunday morning, we were waking up at 48. But that is the nature of fall here in South Central Texas. We get those cold fronts, they come and they go, and we've got to get through another day here with uh, some heat. In fact, by tomorrow, we'll have near record heat. But a cold front is on the way. It's going to be moving through midweek. It'll bring some storm chances with it and also some cooler mornings as well. So some good news in the forecast. Either way, I've got to look ahead coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. From a deadly drag racing crash to a drug bust, a lot has happened in and around San Antonio this weekend. That's right. Our Jonathan Cotto joining us live. Give us an inside look at some of these trending stories on KSAT.com. Good morning, Jonathan. 
Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. And good morning, San Antonio. It's been a busy weekend. We have a lot to unpack. Our top trending story coming in from Kerrville. This is what the scene there looked like earlier. Now, two children are dead and several others were left injured after a car participating in a drag race event lost control and hit other cars and also spectators. The crash happened shortly after 3 p.m. yesterday at the Kerr County Airport. The investigation is ongoing. Now, a chair coach for Texas Wolverine All-Stars was caught trespassing at Laverna high school and was arrested on suspicion of sexual assault of a child. According to an arrest affidavit, 23-year-old Lex Luis Bazan was caught on campus on the 15th. He was arrested on the child sex charge on Friday. Now, a man is arrested following a drug bust on the city's east side. We're talking about Angel Rodriguez, who was detained on Friday during a traffic stop. Deputies say the intended uh, they intended to execute a search warrant at a residence off of East Commerce Street until they saw Rodriguez leave the scene. Deputy sees cash, drugs, and a stolen firearm while executing that search warrant. Now, these are just some of the top trending stories on our website right now. Of course, to read the full story, you can head on over to KSAT.com. And don't forget to download the KSAT app to follow the latest news as it's happening. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. In your morning headlines, the Biden administration taking unprecedented action to resettle Afghan refugees. This after abruptly retreating from Afghanistan. So the government launching a program to let U.S. veterans with ties to their former allies bring them into their respective cities. More than 55,000 Afghans have been living on military bases for weeks now. The new initiative is meant to open more locations for refugees to go for safety. Nonprofits and even Airbnb now working with Afghan families to find new and safe homes. South Korea is planning to return to normal life after they announced that 70% of its population has been vaccinated against COVID-19. That's according to Korea Disease and Prevention Agency. Officials say more than 35 million people received their shot since February. The country will announce new measures to return to normal on Friday. Well, search warrant issued in the investigation to that deadly shooting on the set of Alec Baldwin's latest movie, Rust. It now explains how the gun ended up in Alec Baldwin's hands. Now, the incident killed cinematographer Helena Hutchins and even wounded the movie's director. Baldwin has been in touch with Hutchins' husband and has said his heart is broken. As ABC's Christine Sloan explains, candlelight vigils are being held to honor Hutchins and her accomplishments. A candlelight vigil in Albuquerque, New Mexico, for cinematographer Helena Hutchins Saturday evening. She's a wonderful mom and a wonderful wife and was a, just a wonderful soul. And I really hope more people like her exist. As the cast and crew prepared to rehearse a scene in this building on the movie ranch set outside Santa Fe, the assistant director grabbed a prop gun. The gun was one of three firearms that had been placed on a cart. According to court records, an affidavit prepared by the sheriff's department, the assistant director believed it was a cold gun, meaning it was empty, and gave it to Baldwin saying it was cold. But it wasn't. When Baldwin fired, a projectile struck 42-year-old Helena Hutchins in the chest, killing her and wounding director Joel Sosa in the shoulder. Matt Hutchins paying tribute to his wife on Twitter, writing, Helena inspired us all with her passion and vision, adding her legacy is too meaningful to encapsulate in words. This tragedy comes nearly 30 years after Brandon Lee, son of the legendary martial artist Bruce Lee was killed on the set of The Crow after a prop gun misfired. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Now to the latest in the federal lawsuit filed by Vanessa Bryant, Kobe Bryant's widow, taking on the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office. Vanessa Bryant says the L.A. Sheriff promised to secure the crash site. Kobe Bryant's widow says she pleaded with the Los Angeles County Sheriff to make sure no one took photographs of the site in that deadly 2020 helicopter crash that killed Kobe Bryant. The sheriff reassured that the area had been secured. Vanessa Bryant now claims in court that she has experienced severe emotional distress because she believes first responders took pictures of Kobe's body and shared them. Now, Los Angeles County is seeking to compel psychiatric evaluations for Vanessa Bryant and others to determine if they truly suffered emotional distress. Time now, 835, 73 degrees out. 
High school football, Max. Oh my goodness, we had so many sports to watch yesterday. Did leave the apartment, but take a look at this. We got the best high school catches, touchdowns, passes, and tackles from our area. Coming up, we're taking you behind the scenes of the Broadway tour of The Lion King, currently playing at the Majestic Theater. Zazu right there. I love Zazu. All right, 73 degrees at 835 this morning. Those clouds still lingering. Sarah Spivey will let us know how much longer they'll linger around for and have our Sunday forecast when we come back. Dia de los Muertos is just around the corner, which means that the preparations are in full swing to honor, celebrate, and welcome back your loved one who has passed away. And we want to hear from you. Share with us your must-have items for your ofrendas or altars, and also tell us a little bit about the people that you are honoring this year on Day of the Dead. So we want you to submit those pictures at the link below, and we hope that you'll celebrate this holiday with us. And we'll share those pictures and stories on KSAT News Now on Dia de Muertos or Day of the Dead. Today, with the clock ticking on a deal, which side has the upper hand? Plus, Dr. Fauci, vaccines for kids, and Virginia's governor race heating up why it's critical for the midterms. Today on ABC's This Week with George. It's the buzz around town. The North American tour of Broadway's The Lion King is open at the Majestic Theater. That's right. KSAT producer Alexi Salazar gives us an inside the look. Ooh, exclusive behind the scenes look at the production. We got the chance to go backstage at the Majestic Theater where the Broadway tour of The Lion King is currently playing. We talked to the puppet supervisor and the actor who plays Zazu about how the puppets bring this iconic show to life. So in terms of just the, the, the basic mechanics of it, inside of my right hand I have two trickers which help to move the bird's eyes. My right trigger finger, that's my pointer finger, that's how I move his mouth. In my left hand, I control the wings and the way that the body moves. The whole idea was pretty difficult because we took an animated film and we had to put it on stage. So uh, this idea that having puppets portray the animal side of these characters, of Mufasa for instance, and then also having that human side gives you that kind of a double event that uh, allows the audience in to the story without seeing somebody in a giant lion costume and thinking, oh, well, you know, this is a Halloween costume. It's not that at all. Uh, it's really much more elevated. You know, a lot of these things are incredibly delicate. Uh, there's well over 300 pieces to Simba. Uh, all of the puppets you see here are from the start of our tour, uh, which is four years old now. And this pandemic has reminded us of how much we do need each other. And we have these opportunities to take care of and care for one another. I think this show is a great way of kind of enforcing that. Get your tickets now. The Lion King will be at the Majestic Theatre until November 7th. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. I love Zazu. He's always very dramatic. Are we going to have dramatic weather? You know what? It will take a dramatic turn in the middle of the <laughs> week. So, yeah. You can see the sunshine there, though, on the cityscape of San Antonio. So we're seeing these morning clouds break up already, guys. But boy, is it humid outside. Oh, my gosh. We were seeing some areas of mist out there this morning, even some areas of fog. But guess what? The humidity will nice. come a tumbling down a uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday as a front moves through. Until then, though, we got to get through a couple more days here with this high humidity. Now, take a look at uh, the visibility out there. Visibility still lower out in New Braunfels, but we are seeing some improvement there out in New Braunfels. Visibility down to four miles. Nice visibility around San Antonio as we're starting to see the sun come through, warm up those temperatures and increase the difference between the temperatures and the dew points. As I was mentioning earlier, this time, yes, last week, so Sunday morning last week, we were in the 40s. We're in the 70s this morning, 73 degrees outside at the airport, 71 in Bolverde, 72 at JBSA Randolph, 77 in Stinson and 71 in Divine. Take a look at the future cast. This is right about now. 
and then watch how quickly those clouds go away. By about noon, we'll still have some clouds out there, and it'll be mostly sunny, though, in the afternoon with plenty of sunshine and toasty temperatures. Highs will be near 90 degrees this afternoon. We'll officially go 88 for the high around San Antonio and New Braunfels, but 96 for the high temperature out toward Del Rio. So close to 100 degrees in Del Rio, 95 in Laredo, mid 80s up in the Hill Country, Kerrville and Rock Springs. Although the thermometer today will be in the upper 80s, it'll feel like it's in the low 90s because of the high humidity. So taking you through your day, still some patchy fog out there at 10. Cloudy skies, but then clearing around noon will be at 80 degrees, 88 for the afternoon high. Warm and humid weather all day long for us. South winds, though, not as breezy as yesterday. South winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sun will set at 654, and it'll be a mild evening. We'll still be close to 80 degrees by 10 o'clock. We need to shake up the weather pattern, and we're going to. Uh, we've been following Hurricane Rick here closely, currently a Category 1 hurricane off the southwestern coast of Mexico. It's going to make landfall and fall apart very shortly here, but... It is going to bring us a little bit of moisture our way, and that's going to combine with the midweek cold front and bring us a chance for some rainfall. Until then, however, Monday, tomorrow is going to be a hot day. We're going to be a few degrees hotter than even today with a forecast high of 91. The record for the day is 91 set back in 2010, so we're going to be close to that record. We may even beat that record. Regardless, though, it's going to be hot no matter which way you look at it because the heat index is going to be in the upper 90s and spots close to 100 degrees elsewhere like near Catula. So one more uncomfortably hot day tomorrow and then we'll see some changes. Tuesday night cold front's going to move through. We're going to be on the tail end of this system so we'll have a 30 to 40 percent chance for isolated to scattered showers and storms early Wednesday morning. Now some of those could be on the stronger side as well. But really, we'll be on the tail end of it. So again, most of the heavier rain will be north and across parts of East Texas. But still, behind that, we'll see skies clear throughout the day on Wednesday, and it'll be very windy. Winds will be gusting from the north up to about 35 miles per hour. That's going to usher in the drier air, and that's going to leave us with some cool mornings and comfortable afternoons. By Thursday morning, our morning lows will be in the low 50s. By Friday morning, they'll be in the upper 40s. It's going to be nice and dry and comfortable uh, for Halloween weekend. So just reminding you of the forecast that we just went over uh, some morning clouds and patchy fog tomorrow morning close to that record high of 91. It'll be warm with a few isolated showers on Tuesday as that front approaches. And then once that front moves through, uh, it'll be windy with gusts of up to 35 miles per hour. Skies will be clearing and then look at those high temperatures much more comfortable by the week's end close to 80 degrees mornings in the 40s once again. So by the time kids go trick or treating close to sunset on Sunday, our temperatures will probably be in the uh, 70s and 60s. So okay. nice and comfortable. I am here for it. All right, time to talk sports. It's not raining, but it was raining points with UTSA. The streak lives on. UTSA now 8 and 0 rolling past Louisiana Tech last night. The Roadrunners winning big 45 to 16. First win is a nationally ranked team in the program's history. They are ranked number 24. We might see that number get even better today. Running back six here, McCormick leading the way, 113 yards, three touchdowns. Quarterback Frank Harris, 12 completions, 193 yards, two more scores. So now they get a nice bye week. The only undefeated team in Conference USA. All right. Taking a look at some of our other local scores. Incarnate Word, 20, McNeese State, 28. It was a close one, though. Texas State 16, Georgia State 28, Trinity 66. Ooh, putting on the points. Trinity staying undefeated 6 and 0. Oh. Boom. McMurray 21, TLU 28. All right, we talked college. Now we got to talk high school. High school football action. O'Connor beating Stevens 34 7. Panthers strike first. Quarterback, ooh, Aiden Lara going deep. John Locke, pretty sure he's an author. He's going for it. Over the shoulder, 37-yard touchdown. Next possession for Con O'Connor. Dialing up the same play. Don't fix what's not broken because it works again. Locke catches a 40-yard touchdown. 14-0 Panthers. Stevens would eventually score, but O'Connor getting the big win last night. Taking a look at some of the other scores. Lanier, 34. Jefferson, 0. Madison, this was a barn burner. 24. Brandeis, 21. Harlan, 
24. Marshall, 32. Whew, gotta love it. Speaking of things you gotta love, gotta love the Spurs. Go Spurs, go. I'm just gonna say it. It hasn't been easy, but the Spurs fall to a short bucks last night. I say short because, you know, back to back. 111 to 121. The guys did struggle from distance for the second straight game. Doug McDermott, though, he was heating up from three. He started off three from three from three. Pop not lose any sleep over it, saying the team played great. We had passion, great character, great energy, and great defense. All right, here we go. The Sage is now set for the World Series. The Braves beating the Dodgers. They are set to take on the Houston Astros. Game one of the World Series set for Tuesday. I got to toss it back to Sarah Costa over here. What was this? This? Yeah. It was Go Astros. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. You did it during the Spurs, so I was like. Oh, I was talking about Pop's yeah. passion, too. Oh, yeah, of course. You need but, passion. Yes. I'm excited. I'm there excited. You. Only game three of 82, so you're good. 849, 73 degrees out. It's a story. It's a story we've been following closely for several weeks. The spillgate failure at Lake Gonzalez that essentially drained that reservoir. Now another lake is experiencing a similar problem. Tomorrow on GMSA, how state leadership is responding to the issues. All right, starting off with those lottery numbers. Pick three, four, zero, zero, fireball five. Daily four, zero, three, three, six, fireball four. Cash 5, 1, 11, 22, 24, 34. Texas Lotto, 4, 8, 31, 42, 51, 53. Powerball, 10, 30, 51, 57, 63. Powerball, 20, Power Play, 2. All right, the news you need to know before you go. A man confesses to the murder of 50-year-old Roy Salinas Jr. According to the arrest affidavit, 64-year-old Juan Becerra Jr. turned himself in yesterday. The victim stabbed 13 times back in the late September next to an ice machine. That's near uh, Enrique Barrera Parkway. He was taken to the hospital. That is where he later died. Alvarado now facing murder charges. He is in Bear County Jail on a $100,000 bond. And don't forget, you have till Friday to vote early in the Texas Constitutional Amendment election. There are eight proposals that will be decided on by voters. Right now on KSAT.com, you can find information about those proposed amendments as well as a list of early voting locations. Election day is November 2nd. All right, it is a Sunday, and we want to end on a high note. We want to bring you a smile, so check out this story. An Illinois family showing off their son's sweet and creative Halloween costumes. They are movie buffs, as you can probably recognize if you've ever seen Ferris Bueller. The 1961 Ferrari GT California, well, there you go. The That's Alfano true. family started the project for their son. He has cerebral palsy. He uses a wheelchair. They started the project back in August. And if you take a look close enough, everything is down to the detail. Even the license plate, the speedometer, just amazing. Yes, he's Cameron from Ferris Bueller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And we're seeing some sun here, as you can see outside right now. A good amount of sunshine peeking through those clouds. Visible satellite shows another picture there, but we're looking at cloud cover elsewhere. Uh, now it is very, very muggy outside. We've got morning temperatures in the 70s, 73 degrees at the airport, 71 in Rio Medina, 70 in Bandera, still in the 60s up at Bernie C. Deerfield, but, but we're warming up already. And today's gonna be a hot one. We'll be near 80 already by noon. And in the afternoon, 88 degrees, warm and humid today. That 88 will feel more like 93 this afternoon. South winds at five to 10 miles per hour. If you're a fan of fall though, we are gonna get a cold front moving through Tuesday. Tuesday night into Wednesday, bringing a chance for some storms. That's after potentially record breaking heat Monday, and that'll knock us back down. Mornings will be in the 40s, afternoons will be in the 70s. It'll feel more like fall, guys. I'm looking forward to that front. And of course, we'll keep you updated on air online at KSAT.com. I'm very excited about those cooler temps. Me too. Guys. Especially in time for Halloween. It's been fun this morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like to have fun. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Bloomberg actually just posted a new story, Texas economic boom. We're booming. We're booming, We're especially booming. here in San Antonio. Have, have a good Sunday. Have a boom.